the Advanced Tech Podcast, providing a spotlight for innovators and disruptors. For links and show notes, and to find out how to sponsor the Advanced Tech Podcast, go to advancedtechmedia.org. You can also find and sponsor us on Patreon. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, please take a moment to subscribe and give us a rating. You can also sponsor us using Bitcoin at advancedtechmedia.org slash sponsor. Okay, so continuing on in my uh, trip and talk, I'm here at Carl Alnane and I'm here with some of the creators. So please go ahead and, and introduce yourself. Okay, hi, my uh, nickname is uh, Sudamak. I'm uh, basically one third of responsibility <laughs> of Paranipolis. I'm not Paranipolis from the very beginning because uh, I'm always late. So I came to Paranipolis two months uh, after opening. Uh, but from the time I'm almost full time here and it became part of my life, like maybe most important part of my life right now. So. Um, my name is Joseph. I'm the most responsible person in this building. I don't actually have a real responsibility and it's kind of what I'm comfortable with. So I started kind of like a sub-project in Parallel Polis, which is called Bordel, is a local hackerspace. And the whole point is try to uh, build like a ground up hackerspace with like proactive people that can just like work on their own projects, hopefully also like utilizing the experience and the expertise of like other members of the hackerspace. So yeah, we are now actually in that room which is meant to be a hackerspace and as we talk there is one of our valuable 12 members at this point working on a project and this is exactly what i wanted to see uh, happening here cool and we just did a quick video which i'll put up on the youtube channel so this is a review of the blesco mat it's a quick way to convert your money into bitcoin using the lightning network so currently it's just set up for check crowns but when testing is available, there's definitely the ability to use multi-currency and then change that to Bitcoin. Yeah, I would say that uh, we really appreciate the work just done here in Bordeaux because I think one of, one of the goals uh, of Paranipolis, uh, the organization, is to introduce to people uh, some tools for achieving both personal and economical freedom. So that's, that's great that there is such a project as Blescomat uh, created here. So I would say I really thankful to you guys that uh, they have started this project. And to be fair, the, the Blescomat project is older than the Hackerspace. So like these folks have been meeting here for quite a while. And the need for the Hackerspace actually like originated rather from having teams of people working on like projects like Blescoma so they can have kind of like a you know more sustainable space where they can work and where they can keep their hardware and can have access to tooling. I would like to correct Joseph uh, a bit because uh, there was a kind of hackerspace all the time with our employees but until uh, Joseph took the organization of the hackerspace uh, it was never organized it was a bit chaotic there were hackers uh, around the building uh, but uh, not in the some organized way so well it wasn't i mean the hackerspace itself or bordel is kind of a differentiation from taking the whole building as hackerspace because there are like even in prague you have these more like I would say like hardcore hyperspaces, like a technical hyperspace. There were people around that like had the skill set or had the mindset of like, you know, collaborating in a hyperspace. But then a lot of what, what is happening or what was happening in the building were more of like ideological or even like philosophical meetups and, and discussions. And I felt like the like the technical part was largely missing. And not to say they weren't like technical enough people, but those were super occupied with their existing work and this is kind of an attempt to bring the, like the new blood that still has the drive to spit out projects and, and create like things from scratch. Yeah, that was uh, what I said because the whole time we promoted the tools and uh, I don't know, some software project which were built somewhere else. Yeah. And finally, <laughs> we all have something what actually happened here. We promoted uh, stuff like encryption for the messengers like uh, Signal or PGP or uh, stuff like that. Of course, we promoted Bitcoin and uh, some other cryptocurrencies. And so now, finally, we will have our, clearly our content to promote. Awesome. It's nice to have this space because essentially it's like a, a maker space, but also mindful of cryptography and privacy preserving ways of, of building things, which I think is critical. 
Actually, it is because uh, you know the whole point of Paranipolis is would like to be as uh, much independent or isolated uh, from the governments and those forced authorities. But it doesn't mean that uh, we would like to fight with them because it's uh, not in the concept of Paranipolis as it was uh, presented by. Václav Benda, who wrote the essay Paranipolis, uh, actually in the 70s. We can talk about it uh, a bit later. But uh, so we are not fighting against uh, those forces. We just would like to be uh, under the radar or teach people uh, how to be under the radar. And encryption is one of the crucial tools uh, how to achieve this, this goal. In Canada, where I'm from, uh, that's where NVK is based, and he's always looking at different hardware projects, CB radios, and the use of privacy preserving and freedom generating technology. So we should get them all? Yes, uh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Nowadays, again, uh, we can see that some politicians try to ban encryption from other people, but good thing about it is that it's, it's impossible to actually... Well, it's possible to ban it, but uh, it's uh, impossible to prosecute all users so, because some officials even uh, couldn't find out who is using it and with whom and, and so on. So, And this is what uh, we would like people uh, to know because uh, usually people don't know such a thing. So, so that's uh, one of the goals of Paranipo is to teach people. To, to spread either not not only to present the ideas of freedom why we should be uh, free blah 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 but uh, also how to achieve that yeah, so what are the exact tools are and how to use them so we are doing talks uh, workshops uh, etc surprisingly it actually I started seeing that rather lately where for instance well, given we are quite close to Belarus, and like some people from Belarus are, are also members of, of the hub and like of, of police in general, it was interesting to see that, like at the time of me, at the time of like actually, you know, um, like having protests and having the government kind of like stepping in on individual freedoms and like banning certain services, like these guys were actually the people that then, uh, like I'm hopeful that they took, you know, the stuff that kind of native here in this building and then started actually utilizing it in practice and it doesn't you know does have to mean that they they necessarily like use these services like all day for like all of their communication but at the time they actually needed it because they were they were censored by the local government they could just like ask around and like utilize the, the people around here to you know like mobilize the group for figuring out a solution for their vertical needs so they actually made me real happy to see it happen in practice. Yeah, it was great that they are they are using uh, such a tool here uh, on a daily basis. It was much easier uh, for them to teach other people in uh, Belarus because they, they actually knew almost everything about uh, such a tools and services. So. You know, it's so important to, when you live in a culture that, that doesn't allow you to have a voice, it's so important to be able to express yourself. It should never be the case that ideas are dangerous, but Sometimes that's the truth, depending on the political climate that you live in. Um, sometimes what you believe in can be perceived as being dangerous. So being able to have the, the freedom to be able to still speak your mind outside of that system, I think is really critical. People need that. Uh, it is critical, but it's also not only about some public expression, it's uh, also about uh, private communication, yeah? because uh, there are ideas, information that I would like to share with uh, my friends or basically trusted people, but I would like to keep it secret from, from others, such uh, my enemies, governments and, and such things. So we actually never tell people for what they should uh, use, like those uh, privacy tools. We just uh, teach them how to use them and it's on their decision for what they will use it. Because actually the goal of Parallel Police is not to change the system or change uh, the environment. The goal is to uh, teach people how to live freely within any system, basically. I almost think these might be the, the citadels of our future. I mean, just idea spaces that you can go have a conversation and then 
take what makes sense back to wherever it is that you, you're part of. And what I mentioned with Václav Benda. Václav Benda was the dissident in a communist uh, Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia, one of the co-authors of uh, Charter 77, which was uh, like uh, maybe most critical uh, opponents of communist regime. And he uh, actually wrote the essay called Parani Polis when he explained that it's not effective to fight against uh, the system, against the government, because uh, the government have uh, like endless uh, resources. So it's better to create uh, independent society within the system and call it parallel polis from the Greek word polis, which is society, and parallel, which is great. It's uh, actually self-explained because it's not that you are against something, that you are parallel to something. And in the very beginning of our Paranipolis, those ideas of Václav Benda about uh, Paranipolis was uh, combined uh, with the ideas of Timothy C. May, the author of uh, Crypto Anarchy Manifesto. Because uh, now, with recent technologies, we can achieve that freedom or independence uh, by using uh, the modern technologies. Yeah, so even those uh, those guys didn't know each other, Václav Benda and Timothy Simé, their ideas could be very well combined, and then our Parani Polis uh, was born. Because there is like a lot of like historical context, especially like Central Europe, like throughout, like even like 19th, 20th century, with like basically constantly changing regimes from like feudal systems to right to like the first republics and switching ideologies. So. As, as sort of I've said, this is rather like my interpretation of Parallel Nicholas and kind of like the reason why it's so sound to me and what, why I've decided to participate in some way is that even though like you can live in like a relative freedom and you don't really like feel the daily pressures of like being silenced or like being tracked by anyone, it doesn't mean that all of the data that's being gathered, um, all of that communication that is like stored somewhere in plain text, you want or can be eventually used by one of the parties that gets access to that later on. And obviously, like, you know, we've seen databases being misused by totalitarian regimes in the past where people are judged based on, you know, their ancestry or their political beliefs. And, you know, just as today is a cliche is to say, like, that freedom isn't, like, shouldn't be taken for granted and needs to be needs to be worked on and maintained. And this is, like, for me, this is the part of the maintenance. We, we need to, like, keep working on these tools and like use them and like educate people to use them otherwise they will just like live with it without the option to like opt out live without the option to like say whatever they want without having to be afraid that that communication will be taken somewhere and you know it doesn't have to be now it can be like 20 years from now it can be 30 years from now i think kind of the fact that the place has such a relevance to like Maslow and then kind of the the descent of the communist Czechoslovakia has kind of like a you know like deeper deeper meaning or like deeper relevance to like what the people like went through and I was born like first after your evolution so like I don't even you know I, I can't even make those associations but I definitely see it on my parents or like uh, another generation that uh, uh, I definitely don't want to just like get blindly like all of the data that I have like all of the conversations that I leave with certain people to just like anybody to a person that I don't know and it makes me even like happier to see that the, the idea of Coral Nepal is even like spreading beyond the physical space and by, you know, like having the, the Coral Neapolis open up in, in Bratislava or in Vienna and like other cities. There were even people like interested to open up a similar space in Europe or LA. So um, I'm, I'm very happy, as you, as you mentioned, like that we have a similar space in Vancouver. I'm very happy to hear that kind of similar spots and like. Not necessarily just the hyperspaces, but the spaces where people can just like share these ideas. I would say that right now there are uh, many of Paranipolis uh, around the world, even they just don't call themselves uh, Paranipolis. One example, uh, I would say uh, TAZ0 in, in the Berlin, 
our friends Snuggler and Fairground. They built uh, their own small society of people building the environment around the containers and, uh, and so and so on. Uh, and yeah, this is this is the example of the uh, parallel society which was built independently on on the official system or how to how, how to say it. And they are actually using uh, such uh, such uh, techniques and tools uh, to stay independent. And uh, only difference uh, between uh, us and them is that uh, the main goal of uh, Paranipolis here in Prague, or organization called Paranipolis actually, is to actually teach people how to use, how to build uh, such a society. So it's not about, uh, not only about uh, the community itself of Paranipolis, but uh, about to teach uh, teach others. Sometimes, sometimes uh, we are, many people told us that we are, I don't know, strangely connected to some kind of anarcho-capitalism or something like that, but it's not for specific political or social groups it can be for anyone as i said we don't care what uh, people are gonna do with their freedom if they want to build for example a city based on uh, ideas of lenin and or marx just do it uh, we are not uh, gonna tell you that you shouldn't use uh, the tools we just would like to to have you, your opinions to have those free free of some forced uh, Forced authorities. Well, it sounds almost like it's apolitical, so you could build the same, like, there's no reason you couldn't build this in a capitalistic society. Yeah. If, you believe, <laughs> if you believe in, in communism, okay, uh, build your own communist society. If you believe that the right uh, way how to live is to live without, uh, I don't know, for example, other races, okay, do it. I would say, me personally, I would consider you as a whole, uh, but do it if you want. So what other projects exist in this space, or would you like to see in this space? I can't talk about like Bordeaux specifically, but there are like there are things that go beyond Bordeaux. We've obviously talked about Pleskema, and you know, to be fair, like Pleskema originated in, in the previous agro space or generally in Bordeaux like a while ago. Just like recently, again, became like members of Bordeaux officially because they seem to like this place. But there are like groups of people with like similar interests that tend to talk work on stuff together. So, for instance, the first kind of like line of meetups that we start having here were like sound focus meetups and kind of like jam sessions with one of the members of Paper Hub. These are still ongoing. We recently also invited some people at like the CCC that were to like certain vending and creating you know, like synthesizers from uh, like script material. Then uh, there are like several several people interested in three D printing. They are breaking and fixing the three D printers constantly. I don't know what they work on. Now there are also some like projects which I'm not sure whether like fit the podcast, but there are also people interested in like psychedelics and kind of experimenting with uh, substances and yeah, and then there are like kind of parallel projects that we that we work on. Eventually, the things that I would like to see is us being organized more as a as kind of like a multi skill team which could take on basically like any technological challenge and actually get to get down to some like real hacking. So. Uh, we were talking a lot about participating on like capture flag types of contests or participating on hackathons. We also not under the umbrella of the Bordel because that was non-existent. But last year we organized uh, like our intro uh, hackathon. Or it wasn't intro. It was like meant for other hackerspaces to form their own teams and, and come to participate. And the hackathon was meant to be kind of a protest against like the business-led hackathons where you basically have a company that just like finances solutions that are being built on top of their technological stacks uh, and basically are trying to like find developers or just like ideas for their own products and then them themselves become the judges of the hackathon so the, the closer that you are to like their vision of like what they want to get out of the hackathon the, the greater chance you have of winning uh, but it always doesn't mean that you know, the, the nicest or kind of the most innovative idea wins. So with the hackathon, we are aiming to actually take it from the other side, like not really concentrating on the tech, but rather just on the topics. We had, uh, we had like three contest tracks, uh, privacy, decentralization, and urban activism. And we didn't have any sponsor that would require 
to get its like technological stack used or anything like that. Uh, neither we explicitly required people to be building like new services and new products, but we, we wanted to see like two things. We wanted to see people either building a wrapper solution or making the use of certain like privacy related technologies or just, like decentralized stuff to be easier. Um, so for instance, we had a, a project called Incubate, which is focusing on wrapping our proxies around uh, like blockchain setups so you could have like greater network level privacy or on the side of the pure like privacy track we had uh, a project that was called Shredder uh, where you could uh, have automatically shred your personal data from like whole bunch of services and the winning project actually was a secure drop for journalistic sources that was one of the local teams. The, the second part of that well you don't also you only have to build new things uh, or like new services but you can also break existing stuff. And that didn't actually happen, but I would like that to happen next year as well. And to actually like have some some people doing like penetration testing of certain like widely used privacy tech or, or just like decentralized tech stacks. Recently, like just last week we actually had our first Bordel board council where we basically invited like all of the members because everybody's part of the board and uh, just discussed about like what people would like to see happen here. Um, so I'm hopeful that with this kind of renewed group we'll actually get to organizing the hackathon in a more proper way, getting like more teams excited and having like more interesting solutions coming up and potentially even becoming like members of the hackathon space like after the hackathon. I would like to add to, to Josef that as he mentioned that the project with um, sound processing or how would you call it Apparently, policy itself is not focused or technologies only. We have uh, the triangle in our logo, and uh, actually, every corner of the triangle has its own meaning. And we are trying to combine technology, science, and art. So, the art is one of the main things we would like to focus because sometimes technological ideas are difficult to present to like general public. But the artists have uh, their own kind of language to promote it in a better way than, uh, than you know, geeks. Mm-hmm. Sometimes geeks are, I would say, not really efficient with <laughs> presenting, uh, presenting the idea. So connection between artists and like, technology guys is really important for Polanipolis. And actually, Polanipolis was originally founded by, by art group Stohoven which is a famous uh, Czech uh, art group. Uh, they are doing, I would say, crazy stuff. <laughs> like the guys that, for example, hacked the broadcasting of uh, Czech TV with a nuclear explosion. During, uh, there is uh, some program during the morning. Uh, there are some cameras in the mountains. And, you know, it's early in the morning. I've never seen that. But they uh, were able to, to found the camera, which was... Uh, kind of accessible for them and then they switch the, the cables and put uh, the recording of the nuclear explosion uh, there and it was uh, broadcasted by the Czech uh, national TV. Other project was uh, that they changed the presidential flag from the, from the Prague castle and they put large uh, red underwear. So this is uh, the origin of Paranipolis, this group, because they, the guys met with hackers they got idea to cooperate, let's create uh, the hackerspace, let's create the organization who would combine the science, technology and art and promote uh, freedom ideas. And I would say it's actually like, very useful and again this you know, goes back to the idea of like collaboration with people with different backgrounds and different skill sets and oftentimes it's like super useful to get one of the guys like from the original members or just like the, the people from the arts background somehow like contributing or, or just like commenting on things in your own project because it just gives you the, the perspective that you otherwise wouldn't look at. So I'm kind of grateful that this isn't just about the technical parts and like writing up nice code. Yeah, I would say ideas should also have uh, some nice shape to promote them. You can have the most uh, genius uh, code in the world, uh, but if it's, uh, it's impossible for for people to use it, and if uh, people are not willing to use it uh, for some reason, then 
that kind of uh, useless in many many cases of course there could be case that that's even why we are strongly focused on aesthetics and Parani policy and also like a building I can tell you that originally the building was pink yeah. <laughs> and you don't you really don't want to open it hacker space in the pink building but we would like to like invite people inside to make them uh, feel comfy like, uh, not uh, that messy space where you are afraid uh, to go to the toilet for example <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <clears throat> that's our main focus to keep all the aesthetics and, and building, uh, uh, I would say, it looks pro. Yeah, it's, it's very welcome. This conference, the level of professionals, it's <laughs> incredible. It's such a, such a strong team. It's very nice to hear you. Thank you very much uh, for it. I'm always surprised when people tell us that uh, it's organized in a professional way because, uh, you know, I, I know it from inside. <laughs> yeah. And I know uh, all the chaos <laughs> before the Congress and during the Congress. Yeah. So, so I really appreciate uh, you said it. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully we all will recover soon because before we, we started to record that I was still experiencing, uh, I call it HCPP jet lag. For me, like first day of the Congress is uh, actually kind of fifth day of Congress, <laughs> sleep deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, when uh, our attendees and, and speakers and partners are satisfied when I read, for example, on Twitter, all those tweets that says that it's a nice or great conference. Uh, it's uh, oh, it's really satisfying. <laughs> Even I have no chance to see uh, many talks. Uh, I usually uh, watch the talks during the ongoing year from the recordings. Even uh, though we, we are trying to achieve the best speakers and high quality speakers for the conference. Maybe the most important part for HCPP is actually a gathering of people and not uh, talks itself because uh, on the internet uh, there is a lot of talks uh, you can you can watch uh, for free and, and stuff like that but to actually meet people here uh, that's also why we don't uh, anyhow separate the speakers from uh, from the audience we don't have a special venue for for speakers and special venue for, for attendees because people like to meet each other and uh, that was uh, also the main reason why we decided to make this year HCPP on site, not just online. To make it also online was uh, actually almost last minute uh, decision. We were prepared for the worst scenario uh, that if there will be some heavy lockdown, that we will switch uh, the Congress uh, to the online, but uh, we really didn't want to do that. Yeah. But we were ready, but uh, we were not that prepared to make it both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we wanted to do it on site or online. But uh, the, I would say maybe, I don't know, four or five days before the conference started, we decided to make it both. And <laughs> it really happened on site. And also I've been grateful to the most huge conference cover at Kern Going Bar since like March. This was great to actually be able to interact with people. Uh, even for us, uh, Paranipolis and HCPP. For most of us, it's a uh, like full-time daily job, but as it's a non-profit uh, organization, it should be fun for us to create it. Like, so for me, it was like if it's gonna be just online, there will be still a lot of work, a lot of hard work, almost the same like to to prepare the on-site one. But without that uh, fun part to actually meet people, chatting on the bar with, uh, with a glass of beer. And so even for us as an organizer, so it's uh, really important to make, make it on site. The last three uh, congresses uh, were uh, sold out. And uh, we knew that uh, this year it's not going to happen because uh, people didn't know if uh, they would be able to come. Uh, the most of them were not able, so for the obvious reason, they didn't buy the tickets. 
So we knew that the attendance of this conference, this year conference, there was, I don't know, one third of uh, normal number of attendees. So we were also thinking to make it on the, in this building, Paranipolis, because for, for the Hackers Congress, we are renting the theater next door for, for those large talks, for the circumstances to, to create some better social distancing. And we decided to, to keep also the big hall in the theater, so not put uh, people in, in the risk and make our building overcrowded. Uh, even it was much more expensive, but I would say it was more safe for, for everybody. So one voice I like was in the episode is asking a few questions for the audience. They can uh, reach us, of course, on uh, social media, on our uh, website, uh, paranipolis.cz. And of course, they can reach us uh, at Prague. We are in the wider center of, of, of Prague. There is uh, going to be another kind of lockdown here in Prague, uh, but uh, not that strict. We are not closing Paranipolis uh, right now, so still people can, can come to take a coffee for bitcoins. If uh, they would like to contribute to some project or even initiate some project, uh, which could be, which could be like done, uh, which can be uh, like help to build here in, in Paranipolis, we have usual uh, standard how to reach us. Next days, we are probably start uh, again doing uh, some online streaming, uh, preparing some online workshops uh, and talks because now again we we are losing uh, most of our uh, income. I would say we are losing uh, right now seventy percent of our income as we are not uh, anyhow donated by by state for obvious reasons. We are refusing uh, to to be paid by uh, by state we are heavily dependent on uh, I would say the private uh, private funds uh, voluntary donation uh, and so on so we again have some experiences from the spring lockdown uh, so we switch Paranipolis to virtual studio so if you would like to help us I would say send us donation but uh, also please not only if you would like to contribute, you can buy, I don't know, t-shirts, some workshops, online workshops, and, and so on. I also, I mean, like, speak on the website, if you are a developer, maybe suggest, like, what should be changed on the website. Well, we talked a lot about the aesthetics, but, but uh, you know, as any project, like, the least part is put into your online presence. I guess it would be appreciated if uh, someone wanted to contribute by, you know, like, helping us with maintaining some of the code base related to like any of like the plus either websites or services provided like reach out yeah and also some some tips how to adapt to yeah. the current situation uh would be really appreciated because one of the goals of parani is sustainability i think uh, right now it's uh, one of the main skills uh, which are needed in these times and obviously come to the next like, congress yeah definitely do you have the dates for the next congress yeah, uh, actually the next date is uh, already set. It's uh, going to be from the 1st uh, to 3rd uh, October of 2021. Uh, if we would like to predict uh, when the other ACPP is uh, going to take a uh, date, it's always the first weekend of October. And then if people are looking to directly support Bordel. Yeah, you can check our website, which is bordel.space or bordel.polis.cz. We're kind of like a limited size acre space, so we are only aiming to have 20 members, but in case you wanted to become a member, I mean, this would require some physical presence, but definitely, you know, not 24-7 or anything goes to that. So, you know, tell us about the project that you're working on. We're definitely open to, like, collaborating with uh, other hacker spaces all across the world. As mentioned, once you host the next Hackathon, is flying circuit hackathon, especially then inviting people from various hacker spaces. So if you're interested in hearing more about Cordell, about like the philosophy, look at the website, cordell.space, uh, send me an email, and definitely chat me any of those like remote workshops or something. There's still like a lot of people interested in like blockchain stuff in general. I myself am hosting Ethereum meetups, so in case you, you are interested in that topic, definitely reach out. Uh, Mario, the, basically the other like founding member of Cordell, he's uh, running like lightning meetups and workshops. If you're interested in that, definitely let us know. As it was mentioned, we definitely like to organize more 
sound in Workshop. So in case you have your own special ad hoc or for developing any cool sound library, also let us know. I would mention uh, that uh, not just blockchain or cryptocurrency related uh, project, but also tools for privacy, for private communication and all other stuff. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having us.